Welcome to a Parallel Project Training APM Project Fundamentals Qualification Podcast based on the APM Body of Knowledge 7th edition. You should be using this in conjunction with our e-learning, podcasts and potentially a tutor-led course. For more information please visit www.parallelprojecttraining.com Hello, welcome to another Parallel Project Training Podcast. Um, my name is John Bolton and I've got with me Michelle Greaves today. Hello, Michelle. Hi. Hello. So today, um, another of our little series of podcasts that we do to support people learning and studying for the exam, um, we're going to be talking about reporting, which is um, a section within the syllabus. And I, uh, specifically, we're going to be talking about the purpose and benefits of project reporting. So um, most projects managers have to um, do some sort of reporting during their working lives. In fact, for some, it's the it's the bane of their lives, isn't it, Michelle? Absolutely. So why why do you think we have to do so much reporting? Well, reporting is a, a big part of a project manager's role, and we we tend to focus and and sort of the exams reflect that we focus on the planning stages um, quite a lot. But actually, monitoring, reporting, and controlling our projects is is really important because we need to tell people what we're doing and how it's going. Okay, why not? Why? Um, quite often, we're not the owners of that project, so we have our sponsors that are accountable for the project. We're spending somebody else's money. So we need to um, update people on what's happening with the money, so the budgets, what's happening with the timescales. So if things are falling behind, we can make people aware of that. Um, so it keeps everybody clear about what's happening um, and if there are any issues along the way as well. Okay. So, I mean, you, on, on most projects, you can gather all sorts of data, can't you, and, mm. and sort of analyse on it. But um, the, the purpose of it is more than just briefing people, isn't it? Isn't it so they can sort of make decisions and so that they can kind of look at what's going on and if, if remedial action needs to be taken, they can. Absolutely. Okay. So we quite often need to um, get decisions made by our sponsor on things like changes to the scope of the project. Um, so we need to have a, a process to be able to communicate that information to enable them to make a decision. Yeah. Okay. So are, we, are reports always written down? I mean, are we project managers filling in spreadsheets and PowerPoint diagrams and all sorts of things, don't we? Yeah. What, what sorts of reports, what, what sort of reporting might go on? What sort of formats can they take? Yeah, not not always necessarily written down and um, kind of almost segues to another podcast on um, communication. Um, So um, you could have um, verbal meetings, you could have um, a phone call to to have um, raise an issue with your sponsor, as well as your typical sort of uh, written formal communications, reports, emails um, or informal as well. Um, Quite often see with reporting, organisations have their own standard way of, of doing some of those reports so they'll have a standard form for um, raising issues they will have a standard spreadsheet to update on the top three risks on your project and the um, progress of your project yeah okay so basically we're, we're reporting to sponsors or we're reporting to our funders or whoever it might be on progress what happens from the sort of team level upwards because mm. the project manager is sitting in the middle of this little mix of people aren't they they've got reporting to the sponsor and they've got the users so what about the teams what sort of things might they be reporting on on a regular basis and who to yeah so for the project manager to to be able to update the steering group and the sponsor they're going to need that information from the team so the team are going to need to articulate maybe just verbally in a project team meeting or it could be in a, a more constructed more formal way on a bigger project about um, the percentage completion of their work packages, um, any issues that have come up, any um, queries, how much um, how much time they spent on the project. So quite often, project team members are asked to um, rec- record on timesheets to so record how much time they've spent. Yeah, and so um, and then I suppose the project manager. What normally happens is they they gather all the paperwork together and then go and have a meeting and just discuss it and make sure that it's right. Because mm. uh, there is a, a, a long-standing issue between people saying one thing and actually meaning something else. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one of the common types of reporting you do in, in projects tends to be like a rag report, so a red, amber, green. So everything's um, going great, it's green, everything's um, slightly at risk, a bit wobbly, it's amber, or something's gone wrong, we've 
gone over budget or we're behind, it's red. Um, and sometimes you, you get what um, I, I like to call melon projects. So they're green on the outside, but they're actually red in the inside. Hmm. But people haven't actually been honest about what's happening in the project. The melon projects. I was just going to uh, them called rage reports. Yes. Red, amber, green or emergency. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it would be e-rag, I suppose, would be a better way of putting it. But anyway, mm. rage reports, cool, good. So why, you know, what what's the real advantage of doing all this? Because I'm I'm guessing this can take quite a lot of time. Yep, it can do. Um, and I think um, the reason why we need to make sure we, we're doing reporting, but it needs to be relevant to that actual project. Um, so we need to make sure we're reporting the right information at the right time to the right people. Um, and if we do that, we reduce the risk of the project going over, so becoming late, um, going over budget, um, going off track, perhaps not producing something that the customers are happy with. Um, so we reduce a lot of our, our risk within um, doing that reporting. Also, reporting enables us to update our stakeholders give them a lot of confidence in, in what we're doing on the project and that we've got a handle on everything. And it gives everybody in the project, so the project manager's clear on what the team are doing, the team are clear on what their peers are doing, the sponsor's clear on what's happening in the project as well. So that clarity mm. um, is a, a really big benefit of mm. having reporting. You might also have to report for sort of other governance arrangements like, you know, regulators or mm. people like the CAA or the Office of Rail Regulation, people like that. Yeah. So, so sometimes we have to do reporting as well. Yeah, so it's kind of, kind of non-optional. Mm. Reporting something that's a, a, a fundamental piece of the governance structure, isn't it, really? Yeah. Laid down within that. Good. OK. Well, it's a relatively straightforward little syllabus, this syllabus mm. section. This just outlined the purpose and benefits of project reporting i think we may well have done that don't you yep i'd Good. agree with that let's call it a wrap we hope you enjoyed this podcast and found it informative to find out about our training courses e-learning or tutor-led course please go to www.parallelprojecttraining.com mm-hmm.